Two months ago, I made a video where I committed to stop compulsively watching YouTube. I set this goal because a lot of people have vices, be that a substance or a behaviour, and for me, watching YouTube and compulsively scrolling the internet in general was my biggest vice. Now, I'm not here to suggest social media is like drinking or smoking. As far as I'm concerned, nobody has gotten liver cancer from being on the internet. But as I've gotten older, I've become quite intrigued by the concept of digital minimalism, as like many other people, I've struggled to put my phone down. The term digital minimalism was coined by the author Cal Newport, in his book appropriately named Digital Minimalism, which discusses the impact technology has on our lives, particularly in regards to smartphones and social media. This book has inspired a wave of people to create content about digital minimalism, particularly with the dopamine detox trend, which quite ironically dominates social media. When it comes to putting your phone down, most YouTubers I've seen tend to give the same advice. Tips like removing social media apps from your homepage, using a black and white filter, turning on silent mode, setting screen time limits, and organising your apps into folders. I've tried all these things, but I didn't find this advice particularly useful. If I hid or uninstalled distracting apps, I would just reinstall them again or just use the browser. If I used a filter, I would eventually just get rid of it. And putting my phone on silent mode actually made me check my phone more often as I was paranoid about missing an important text or phone call. While I think these people have good intentions and some of the advice is good, I think they're trying to offer a convenient solution with as few sacrifices as possible. But this isn't effective if you don't have any self-discipline because the only thing stopping you from going back to your old ways is willpower. I've also heard some people say smartphones aren't the problem, social media is. But I don't necessarily agree with this. Yes, I don't like social media, and for many people, it is what keeps them hooked to their phones. But implying smartphones are addictive purely because of social media is an oversimplification. Because even if you don't use social media, you could still waste time on your phone watching Netflix, playing games, browsing the web. Another problem is that over time, smartphones have gone from a luxury to something that is basically mandatory. Some banks require a smartphone, some products rely on a mobile app to work, and tools like WhatsApp require a phone, even though they're based over the internet. I used to be a waiter at a restaurant, and we didn't have a machine in the restaurant to clock into our shifts. Instead, we had to use this very unreliable smartphone app. I don't think phones are inherently bad, and they can be useful, but this overdependence is a problem because it creates a single point of failure. I know many people who don't even own a computer, and instead rely on their phone for everything. So if their phone is lost, stolen, or broken, Things don't go well, and then these people get very stressed because they have no backup solution. And it's not just something that could happen, it has happened. So how have I managed to solve my smartphone addiction? Well, instead of trying to use my phone in a more productive manner, I took a different approach and instead reduced my dependence on my phone by having a bunch of items that do one thing instead of one device that does everything. My logic behind this is the more you can do without your phone, the less you need to use your phone, therefore the less you do use your phone, and therefore the less likely you are to fall into a trap of using your phone. You could argue it's not very minimalistic, but minimalism isn't about owning as few things as possible. It's about ensuring the things you do own add value to your life or serve a purpose. Now, let's talk about some of the items I have. First, I have a watch. It's not a Rolex or an Apple watch that costs hundreds of dollars. It's a cheap Casio I bought on eBay for about five quid. And you know what it does? It tells me the time so I don't need to pull my phone out to do that. You can get a fitness watch to monitor things like your heart rate and steps, but I think anything above that is just unnecessary. And what's nice is the battery lasts years rather than just a few days. The second thing is a Kindle. I don't really like Amazon, and the sensation of a physical book is hard to beat, but reading on an e-reader is miles better than reading on a phone or tablet for many reasons. It's also possible to use a Kindle without DRM, without a subscription, and without registering your device with Amazon. And that's exactly what I've done. The third thing is a notepad. Old school pen and paper. It works great for writing notes, doing calculations, and making to-do lists. I'd love to get one of these e-ink tablets because I don't like wasting paper, and to be honest they just look cool, but unfortunately they are very expensive. And the fourth thing is a GoPro. There are better cameras out there and not everyone needs a designated camera, but I think they're more enjoyable to use and they usually look better, which matters for me given that I'm a content creator and I like my videos to look pretty. 
Most other things I just do on my desktop computer, so I don't find myself scrolling the internet on my phone before bed. Of course, consuming social media on a computer isn't much better than consuming it on your phone, but at least with a desktop your distractions stay at home. The only things I use my phone for besides call and text are navigation and listening to music at the gym, and I could even find workarounds to that. If anyone needs to contact me urgently, they have my phone number. But if it's just a message on Discord or Matrix, or if it's an email, it can wait until I get home. Now, you might be wondering, what about using a dumb phone? Well, it's surprisingly difficult to find a dumb phone that does the job, as a lot of dumb phones aren't actually that dumb. Some of them run Android, have apps like YouTube and Facebook preloaded, and some of them even have touchscreens. There are some hippie devices like the Light Phone, Medita Pure, and Punked MP01, but they're quite expensive. Even if you find a phone that can only do calls and texts, you may still rely on apps that require you to own a smartphone. You need the right balance of minimalism and practicality, so in a way you need to make your smartphone as close to a dumb phone as is reasonably practical, while simultaneously reducing dependence on your phone. But again, this method isn't ideal either because you're still dependent on willpower and self-discipline, because a smartphone dressed up as a dumb phone is still a smartphone. To spend less time on your phone, you also need to change your mindset. If you associate smartphones with a world of limitless knowledge and entertainment that gives you that dopamine kick, then you're not going to want to quit because why would you want to give up something you enjoy? You might tell yourself you don't like smartphones, but do you actually believe it? If you instead think of smartphones as tracking devices that suck away your precious time and make you feel emotionally drained, that's a much more negative impression. And of course, it is a bit exaggerated, but I find associating negative things with negative consequences tends to help me avoid vices. Also think about why you're using your phone so much. In my case, I would spend so much time on my phone because I was simply bored. If I couldn't fall asleep, I would pull my phone out. But of course, that just made it even harder to fall asleep. If I was on the train, I'd pull my phone out. If I was on my break, I'd pull my phone out. Think about what you can do in these moments instead. And when you're at home, don't bring your phone to the toilet with you. I don't want to sound like your mum, but it's kind of gross if you think about it. Do you really need to stimulate your brain in the two minutes you spend taking a dump? Anyway, that's all for today. Quite a long one as you can tell, but I hope it provides some kind of value to you. But before I end the video, I just want to announce that I've rebranded my second channel GNU Plus Taz to Not Napoleon, and I've created an Odyssey channel for it. On top of my regular non-tech content, but still kinda nerdy content, I'll also be making videos about things like productivity and grinding. I was initially going to post this video over there, but decided to post it here instead because it is still tech related. Until next time, cheerio.